All right, today I'm starting to put back the ceiling, um, particularly in this area, this is where we're doing it. And this is where the shower's got to go, so we've got to put the ceiling back before we actually fit the shower in and toilet. I'm putting the old paneling back in. It's um, still in pretty good nick. It's very durable, yeah, it's smooth. We're going to be painting it white with some uh, vinyl paint. Um, the whole ceiling will be white and hopefully it'll look, it should come up all right. What I like about using the existing ceiling is that unlike timber and so on, it has no cracks. There's no joins where grease and fat and oil and stuff from the kitchen can gather. Your hair doesn't get caught on it and it's easily maintained. You can wipe it down and it comes up clean. So we're going to give it a go. Hopefully it'll work. Uh, if it doesn't, <laughs> then it'll have to be We'll have to come up with another solution. Uh, the difficulty, of course, is lining it up with the original holes and everything. The battens that I've created here on the side uh, actually extend further than the ceiling, so I have to cut the ceiling back a bit, uh, which is not hard to do. You can cut it with a scissors or a knife. It's actually quite easy to work with. It's just awkward getting it up there. One of the difficulties of hanging a ceiling on your own is that you've got to support it. And if you've ever hung plaster, you know that extremely frustrating and difficult so I've made a, a support um, that fits neatly out of the ceiling uh, I can adjust the height and that holds it up at one end uh, bearing in mind if you're making one of these you don't want them to fall over because they're likely to smash the windows so it's got a foot on the end so it sits fairly straight on the floor and it can't actually wobble sideways and to stop it falling backwards I've got a brace that I'm securing to the timber floor and that seems that's working quite well. One thing I uh, have discovered, and something I probably wouldn't do again, is I wouldn't use insulation wool for the ceiling. The thickness on these 3.5 bats is a problem because the pushback is quite significant which then works against the ceiling when you're putting it up. So I've had to strip them back and take off, you know, an inch or so. If I did it again, I'd use foam board um, like I did in the walls. It's already got a reflective foil on um, and it's uh, solid once it's up, it doesn't move. This stuff's been falling down, you can sort of have to tape it everywhere to hold it up while we're working. I've got the last of the uh, isolation up. That's a difficult job in itself. Wait till you see putting up the roof. Let the games begin. Okay, so as you can see, the ceiling is up, but it's a long way from finished. Skylight has to be put in to stop the sagging. The beading strip needs to be put along here to finish that off. It didn't quite go in. It didn't quite work out the way I planned where it actually sat in there nicely and finished it off, unfortunately. So I'll have to put something there didn't quite finish off the way I would have liked. It was supposed to slide all the way in, but it's a pretty exacting job to put this ceiling back where it's meant to go, especially when you've got to line up all these lug holes. Now what I've done is I've screwed it on the sides. Now none of this will be visible. The overhead cabinets will be running along here and probably sitting around about there, um, or even out here in some cases across there like that. In terms of the light fittings, the only one that's remaining really is the one up the front because that gives us cabin light and that's we can switch that on from the bus. These others will be having down lights in them and there'll be a cover plate over this. Okay. 
I know a lot of people put timber battens up, which look very nice. My hesitation with it is that it's a ceiling and in a house, a timber ceiling is actually raised away from the hair and people touching it and so on. I'm going to show you what the rinsing water looks like after it's been sugar soaked and I'll give you an idea of the amount of oil and things that accumulate on these ceilings. This is the colour of the rinsing water after I have scrubbed the ceiling down with soap when it was out of the bus and then gurneyed it off, uh, washed it down with sugar soap and then rinsed it. I'm using a, an auto vinyl uh, paint um, that I just got from the paint shop. It's a lone sheen acrylic. It's one of a surface that you could wipe down easily and that surface tends to get too dirty and a gloss surface, well, it tends to show up every fault uh, and wave. So on in between and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, unfortunately the vinyl paint directly on this surface has not stuck and basically it means that it's just peeling off or I can just peel it off like this and it's coming off in huge sheets. So hot tip, primer coat this vinyl before you attempt to paint it. Uh, and I have tested it this time. I've used a oil based primer undercoat and it sticks fine so that'll be the base coat before I put the vinyl coat on top. All right, so the ceiling is in. The oil-based primer coat has worked very well. And then I've painted it over with the acrylic vinyl paint that I used originally. Still gotta put the, the speakers back in and that'll bring the roof back up tight. You can see that around the uh, skylight on the fan, it's uh, quite even. And of course, the battens and everything hold it in place quite well.